here are some perspective, perspective that of water garden that we recently got just last two to three days ago. The project is an award-winning one with 448 units comprising of 16 blocks of five-story building, a basement car park, and a childcare centre. Water Gardens at Canberra have also won the Asia Pacific Awards and is jointly developed by UOL, UIC and King Leong. More importantly, Water Gardens at Canberra is strategically located just 350 metres to Canberra MRT. Our show flat, however, is just right behind Sambawang MRT. The projects also sit on a sizable plot of close to 300,000 square feet of land and was bought at an attractive price of $650 per square feet per plot ratio. But more importantly, our project is targeted to launch very, very soon, likely end of the month or early next month. So if you haven't been marketing water gardens, you should start now. Here's eight compelling reasons why enter now and why water garden. Number one, low interest rate. Number two, low entry price. Number three, high inflation. Number four, low land supply. Number five, expensive land bids. Number six, rising construction costs. Number seven, invest in the URA master plan. And number eight, proven track record of the developer. Let's, let's dive right in. Number one, low interest rate. Investors are inclined to borrow more in a low interest environment. By a show of hand, or you can type in the group chat 3%. If you have bought property in the past and have taken a loan of more than 3% in the past. Can we have some response? Imagine, imagine the cost saving you will get if interest were as low as 1%, like what we have in the market today. You will have, you will have gotten a lot of cost saving. I have done the calculation for you. If interest rate was as, was as low as 1%, you would have saved a total of 269,000 269, in total over the over the span of three years. But what does a low interest environment mean? It means that if I have $1 million and if I wish to buy a 1 million property, I will be more inclined to take a 75% loan and use my remaining 700 over K to invest in other high yield, high performing investment product such as stocks, shares, commodities, corporate bond, giving me higher yield of 5 to 7%. Point number two, low interest rate. The low entry price below one four, below one five xx per square feet will make water garden highly sought after. This is because the land was bought in 2020 at an attractive price of $650 per square foot per plot ratio giving a break-even price of $1,224 per square feet per plot ratio. If the developer were to launch at a 25% profit, price would have been at $1,530 per square feet. And it is a good buy because later I will show you, there are only three other projects in the OCR at this price tag. However, if the developer were aggressive and wants to sell out and launch the price at 15 to 20 percent sell 20 15 to 20 percent profit launch price would be at 14 xx per square feet and it's a must buy because in the market there's only two other projects below 1005 let me show them to you i've done a comparison analysis for the cheapest unit in the ocr 
And it turns out that only Jovelle and Treasures at Tampanese were, were below $1,005 per square feet. Riverfront, Midwood and Florence were at the 15XX per square foot mark. And St. Kang Grand is at the 16XX per square feet mark. Today, I give you a brand new condo right, right next to MRT at 14XX PSF with strong exit strategy. You will ask me, Trudy, are you sure? Let us take a look at what are the projects below 1,005 and how fast they are selling. We have Jovell at Flora Drive, which have sold 62.62%. And most of the units sold in May was two and three bedroom. Treasures at Tampanese is almost at 90% sale mark with, with mostly two and three bedroom transacted in May. Question. Price or after the project is almost sold out. I remembered when Treasures was first launched, the average price for two and three bedroom were only at 13XX. Today, the same type is calling at 1005 to 1006 per square foot. But really, what does 1004 per square feet mean to us? It is like going back in time to four years ago when North Park was launched at 1004 per square feet in 2017. Today, a 99 years condo, Candice residences, not near MRT, somewhere, somewhere near the Sambawang Park, have also transacted close to 1004 per square foot. Today, I give you Water Gardens, a brand new condo near MRT at 1004 XX per square feet. You will ask me, Trudy, are you really sure? This leads us to point number three, high inflation. A news article by, a news article by today reported that DBS mentioned that the average private home will be at 2003 to 2009 per square feet by 2030. It is also reported that the average size for new homes will string from 1083 square feet to 840 square feet by 2030. This reminds me of a new launch that I that I've transacted late last year, the Link at Beauty World. It is also integrated with Beauty World MRT with retail components and office components. A young couple have a young couple bought a three bedroom from me at 2,200 2, over per square feet. And the size of the three bedroom were merely at 797 square feet. DBS also reported that the new, the unsold units for private home will fall below 16,000 square feet by 2023. We will unravel why did DBS make this statement. And lastly, it was also reported that HDB upgraders will be the key driver for demand, apart from foreigner, Singaporean, and PR. Another news article that mentioned that HDB, are, HDB upgraders are filling up the mass market condominiums, and price have gone up by 4.4% year on year. Point number four low land supply. Strong demand for new home sale since 2017 have led to low land supply. Follow me as I guide you through the graph. In 2017, the number of unsold, uncompleted units fell below 15,000 15, units and we have a M block and GLS land sale. Therefore, you see that the number of unsold units increased sharply in 2018 and in 2019. This is because projects launched one by one. But because the demand for new home was so strong, su supply is diminishing. And today we are at second quarter 2021 and the unsold number, the number of unsold units have dropped below 19,000. 
by 2022 we will have hit below 15000 mark again will we see another round of m block and gls land sale late last sometime this sometime last year we had two months of lockdown in april and may after that we had three consecutive quarters of increased demand our enhanced phase will we, our enhanced phase will end in sunday will we be seeing another round of increased demand another article to mention strong demand for private home sale and these have also led to developer increasing price places pro projects such as Sengkang grand and key residences have already increased price and projects like treasures and normanton park will be increasing price very soon Point number five, expensive land bids. Many people are talking about this new news article, but are we, capital, are we capitalizing on it? 15 developers have been seen, have been seen snatching up the Ang Mo Kio Avenue one site with UOL emerging as a top bidder, begging in the project at 3118 per square feet per plot ratio. The EC at Tanga have also saw a record high price of $603 per square feet per plot ratio bought by CDL and MCL. These reiterate developers' strong confidence in the property market. But what it means to consumers? If you wait, you will have to pay more. The Ang Mokyo site will be expected to launch at 20XX and the Tanga EC will be expected to launch at 12XX. In line with the other EC such as Ola and Park Central. Point number six, high construction costs. There are so many news articles and news reporting that the coronavirus transmission have led to an increase in construction costs. Developers' margin will be squeezed, and the extra cost will eventually be transferred to the consumer. Are we still waiting? Point number seven, and in my opinion, the most important point for today, invest in the URA master plan. Investors all know how to put their money in key location identified by the master plan. But what really is the master plan about? In order to achieve sustainability in the long run and to reduce traffic congestion in the CBD, URA has adopted strategy to decentralize commercial activity to commercial centers outside the city. Places identified for decentralization have seen huge growth and transformation. In the URA Master Plan 2008, we have regional centers such as Tampanese, Jurong Lakeside, and Woodlands. We have sub-regional centers such as Paya Lebar and One North. And in the fringe city, we have Novena. I will show you examples in Paya Lebar, Novena, and Canberra, how the property have appreciated in this location. We start with Paya Lebar. In 2011, Paya Lebar Square was sold at $585 million. The next year, it was launched at an average price of $1,007. Later, let's take a look at how much price have gone up till today. <clears throat> In 2016, Land Lease also spent $3.7 billion to develop 2.9 hectares at Park place at Paya Lebar's quarter. We have the we have the commercial and retail com component. We have the residential component, and we have the office component, all in one. And lastly, in two thousand one seven, Sing Post have spent one hundred and fifty billion to revamp its building, adding a new retail arm to it. This is Paya Lebar at a glance. You have Paya Lebar Square on the top right, 
On the top left, we will have park place, residences. On the bottom right and on the top right, we have PLQ. And on the bottom left, we have sink post. Paya Leba Square have also seen high take-up rate of more than 55% when it was launched at $1,007 per square feet back in 2012. Today, price have shoot up and have crossed the $2,150 mark. Resale price at Paya Leba have also doubled from merely $564 per square feet to more than $1,002 in today's market. Park Place residences have also hit a record high of more than $2,000 per square feet. Would this be possible without the master plan 2008? Another example close to my heart, Novena will be completed as a health city by 2030. Not only will we have the Tan Tok Seng Hospital and Ren Si Community Hospital, we will also have other medical and training facilities, health science school, National Skin Center and National Healthcare Group, among other medical facilities. Why did I choose Novena to be a subject of top, to be a topic of discussion? Back then in 2010, when I first started my real estate career, I was approached by a client to sell a pair of medical suites at Novena Medical Center. Novena Medical Center is also integrated with Novena MRT and has a commercial and has a retail arm called the Square Two. Back then in 2005, my clients have bought the two units at barely $1,005 per square foot. And I have been tasked by him to sell it at $3,000 per square feet in 2010. Although I did not manage to sell that two units, I managed to sell another pair of medical suite at Novena Medical Center for another seller on the same level. The price that I've sold it was at $2,850 per square feet. The buyer that bought from me is a retiree and he bought it for his son who is still in the medicine school. And before he gave me the check, he asked me, Trudy, is the price very high? And I told him, don't worry, the price will still go up. Do you want to make a guess how much the price is calling and have transacted at Novena Medical Center? Let me show you. <clears throat> The price have increased by 3.44 at Novena Medical Center. And today, prices are calling past $5,000 mark with $4,450 transacted in a short span of eight years. Could this be possible without the master plan 2008? What is happening in the North? I will show you an example of how properties at Canberra have appreciated. But before that, let us, do, let us look at the transformation at Woodlands and, and at Yishun. Woodlands will, be a, Woodlands will be a regional business hub with offices and retails. New public plaza will also be made available to residents of the North. Wood Square has already been completed by Far East Organization with retail, FMB, and childcare center directly connected to Woodlands MRT. And the Great A office are calling at $2,000 per square feet today. We also have future mixed use development at Woodlands Avenue 2, residential offices and retail component linked with upcoming Woodlands MRT. By the end of 2022, Woodlands will also be a mini health city providing acute and community hospital, nursing home, rehabilitation center, and specialist center in a park-like setting. Will, this, will the success story of Novena repeat itself at Woodlands? Just one station away from Canberra, we have the Yishun Integrated Transport Hub, which was completed just two years ago. And 
and there we have the Yishun MRT, Aircon Bus Interchange, a mega shopping mall, North Point City, and North Park residences. What if I've told you that units at North Park have appreciated from two from $1,100 per square feet and have transacted at $1,700 per square feet today. Could this be possible without the master plan 2008? Right at the heart of Canberra, we have the Canberra Plaza, which is linked to Canberra MRT, offering supermarket, restaurant, fast food, enrichment center, and a small water play park. We also have Bukit Canberra, an integrated park with polyclinics, senior care center, hawker center, swimming pools, and indoor sports hall. And this will be completed by the end of the year. Does this remind you of Woodleigh residences in Bidadari Park? At, at Water Gardens at Canberra, you only need to pay two thirds of the cost of Woodleigh residences. Next more recreation and lifestyle options in the north. We have the Lower Salita Reservoir Park, the Rover Bay, and more upcoming park connectors, providing jogging and cycling trail for residences in the, for residents in the north. Transformation in the northeast. We have also the Pongo Di Digital District, For, for, for easy transportation, the North-South Expressway will be completed by 2026, shortening the traveling time between the North and the city by more than 15 minutes. Towns that will benefit includes Yishun, Ang Mo Kio, Woodlands and Sambawang. Last but not least, a potential white site identified in the URA Master Plan 2019. Could this be another future integrated transport hub? If the integrated transport hub at Yishun have already transacted at $1,007 per square foot, what do you think would be the price of this integrated development at Sambawang? Would this provide a strong exit strategy for water, for water gardens at Canberra? This is a real life story of my mom in 2011. I have just joined the real estate industry for one year in 2011 and my mom told me that she would be interested to buy a private property in the north. We visited several launches in Khatib, Ishun, Canberra and Sambawang. And my mom shortlisted eight courtyard and Ishun Sapphire. At that time, eight courtyard was marketed by Far East organization and was calling between $700 to $800 per square foot. Yishun Sapphire, on the other hand, was calling at $600 per square foot, and, there, and we found a fire sale at that time with price below $600 per square foot. My mom approached me and asked me for my advice, and I told her, just buy a courtyard. The newer and better facility will attract the tenant pool. So she hated my advice. Instead of a three bedroom at Yishun Sapphire, she went for a two bedroom at Eight Courtyard at almost the same price. Today, we fast forward. The price at Yishun Sapphire has gone up by 100 plus per square feet, but Eight Courtyard have shoot up close to $500 per square foot. I'm glad I advised my mom with the correct advice. Eight Courtyard also have 131 profitable transaction and a high rental yield of 3.12%. Her unit at Eight Courtyard has never been left empty for a day ever since it has been rented out. Would history repeat itself for water gardens? My last point, proven track record of the developer. UOL has developed and completed many residential developments in Singapore. But let me show you just few examples 
of some of the completed projects by UOL recently and how well are they doing? Let's start with <clears throat> let's start with Meadows at Pierce. This is a freehold project at Upper Thompson. And it has just completed in the last 12 years. Price have already shoot up by 42.85%. Potanic at Bartley saw a 21.36% in the last six years. And Clement Canopy which was just recently TOP in the last one to one and a half years, saw 18.19% growth in the last four years. What do these three properties have in common? They all made three plus percent profit year on year. And history will repeat itself for water gardens at Canberra. Question, how much of the market share would you like to capture? With that, I conclude my eight compelling reason why enter now and why choose water gardens. Motivational speaker, Tony Robbins. Action is the most important key to any success. I thank you all for your time and I wish you success in your marketing campaign and, and for you to close multiple units at water gardens. Presented with award winner for Architecture, Multiple Residence Singapore is Residential Development at Canberra Drive by UOL Group Limited, UIC Limited, Kang Lung Company.